Now it's time to start talking about the Seattle Seahawks and kind of diving through this offense to find out where the fantasy relevant players are in 2024. Let's look at the depth chart here. Look at the quarterback position. Geno Smith is the number one quarterback, obviously, with Sam Howell coming the backup. Now, a lot of people, there were some people that was kind of climbing. You know, we were kind of here and there in the back. Sam Howell will be the starting quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks. I don't think so. Not so fast. Geno Smith has something to say about that. Ever since coming over to Seattle and getting the opportunity to play with Seattle, he has been a different type of quarterback. I'm not saying any type of, of, of top tier type of quarterback, but maybe somebody in the mid tier, mid rounds you go somewhere around the Matthew Stafford's, maybe a little bit below Matthew Stafford, but somewhere around that area uh, and can just get the job done and make you have nice fantasy relevant pieces in this offense. But let's, before we dive too much into that, let's look at the running back position here and look at the depth chart. So. First guy, we got Kenneth Walker Jr., Zach Charbonnet, Kenny, uh, Kenny McIntosh, and the rookie George Holani. So a lot of people whenever, I'll never forget this. Everybody was so high on Kenneth Walker. And then Zach Charbonnet comes around. And they, they get drafted really, really high into the NFL draft. They're like, whoa, there goes Rip. It was uh, Kenneth, Kenny Walker. He had a freaking a monster year in his rookie season. He was going to come out a sophomore and be the beast. Now it's going to be a 50-50 timeshare uh, now that they got Zach Charbonnet in the house. But that didn't happen. It was Kenneth Walker's show. Now, they got a new offensive coordinator. got a new head coach. Pete Carroll's now out. We don't know what this offense is going to look like. But I, if I had to say anything, I think this is definitely Kenneth Walker's backfield. When Zach Charbonnet had the opportunity to go in there and be the guy when Kenneth Walker was injured, he didn't wow me whatsoever. He didn't put up any type of good fantasy points. He wasn't running the ball very efficient. It just wasn't very good. Kenneth Walker came back from injury looking like a stud again so this is kenneth walker's backfield he is clearly in my eyes the best running back on this offense and zach charbonnet is not even close to him so i think he is going to be very good and, and, and fantasy viable for you for this season no matter what the scheme is going to be he's just going to show out he's going to prove that he is the best running back to have so let's look at the depth chart here let's look at the wide receivers now we do have dk metcalf here tyler lockett jackson smith and jigba jake bobo we got young and eskridge there as well but look this is the, like a three-headed monster at the wide receiver position Position. DK Metcalf is the main guy here. He's the big, burly type of guy. He's going to get you some touchdowns. He's a physical specimen, right? He is the one that you are wanting to have. But they also have Tyler Lockett here and Jackson Smith and Jigba. So let's let's start with Jackson Smith and Jigba. A lot of people are thinking he's taking the step forward. He's going to be going at the wide receiver too. They end up signing Tyler Lockett to another contract. So now it looks like Jackson Smith and Jigba is going to be that third wide receiver again. He should still do well, right? He did really good. He's got good hands, got good vision, good route running ability. But again, when you're the third fiddle on this offense with not a prolific quarterback, a good quarterback in Geno Smith, but not prolific, the fantasy points are just a little bit, you got to reel it back a little bit. You can't be so energetic when having someone that's going to break out the season when you have a DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett above you on the depth chart. So Tyler Lockett, he is a best ball kind of guy, right? If you're playing best ball right now, Tyler Lockett, somebody you are going to want to have. He can have those boom weeks, and that's what you're looking for. You know, I mean, it may be not the safest floor possible, but he can. He has a he has an okay floor, but he can hit you with those boom weeks. He can he can rock you out with 35, 40 yard touchdown bomb in any given play. That's what we like about Tyler Lockett. Even though he's kind of starting to get older, it is what it is. But he's still a good viable fantasy asset for you to have. So this this wide receiver room, right? It's something to have. I, I like all three wide receivers but if i had to rank him i'd say dk is the number one tyler lock is number two and unfortunately jsn is your number three i just don't think he has the opportunity or gonna have the target share enough to be that you know to to give you that boost then in 2024 so let's look at the depth chart here look real quick at the tight end position we got Noah Fant as number one and Farrell Brown there at the number two so Noah Fant finally gets the opportunity right you go buy a goes kobe parkinson he's by himself in this tight end room he should be able to be very viable for Geno Smith. He was okay at, at best last season. He should at least be a good serviceable tight end in 2024. Geno Smith does look for the tight end position just as much as he looks for the wide receiver position. So he's going to get his targets. He's going to get his share. No offense coming over in that trade uh, with the Denver Broncos. And he's got, the, he's got enough speed to be very, very good for fantasy football. It's just, is he going to be one of those top tier guys? No, but he's somebody, if you pump the tight end position, you grab somebody later on, no offense, somebody that can get you some points at that tight end position, maybe a tight end two or so somewhere in that area he could probably work it out for you but if we're looking at the entire offense for the seattle seahawks i would have to say geno smith as a quarterback that i wouldn't mind having maybe as my quarterback too or if you completely punted the position really rocked out on those skill positions and the wide receivers and the running backs geno smith 
could be good. Maybe if you grab the DK Metcalf early on in the draft, or maybe grab yourself a Locket or a JSN, some correlation that you could have. Uh, I wouldn't mind that whatsoever. If we're looking at the running back position, I would definitely say Kenneth Walker is my main guy. I wouldn't worry about anybody else. Even Zach Charbonnet, not somebody that I would want to go out there and target. I just don't think he's a very good running back as far as what we thought he could be. He's just not that guy. It is Kenneth Walker. He's the one that I would want. At the wide receiver position, I'm saying DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett are the two guys that I would really, really like to have. And JSN, somebody that you could play in maybe in your flex. I wouldn't want to have JSN as one of my top three wide receivers on my team. But if you got him as your fourth wide receiver, somebody you may be able to plug into your flex from here or there, bye week fill in, such and such, JSN's completely fine. At the tight end position, I would talk, I would probably say more of like Noah Fant. Noah Fant's not that bad. Like I said, he's going to have the opportunity to show that he can provide some fantasy points for you. And again, correlation. If you have like a Geno Smith, uh, Tyler Lockett, Noah Fant. I think that's a really good correlation to have, especially later on in the draft. Something you can kind of play around with for your fantasy. I mean, guys, make sure you're hitting the like button. Hit the subscribe button. We are pumping out videos each and every week to help you best dominate your league. And make sure you leave a comment down below. Who is your best, or your best Seahawk to have in 2024? Who do you guys want to be drafting? I can't wait to see you guys on the next video. We'll see you guys next time.